Our last lesson in this unit is entitled Pascal's Triangle and the Binomial Theorem. Before we begin this formal lesson part, uh, let's just go over a couple of different definitions that you should already know. The first is what a binomial expression is. And the binomial expression is just a sum or difference of two different terms. So I have three different examples here written out. Each of these are terms that are separated by a plus sign or a minus sign. Binomial just means there's two. We're already familiar with uh, also how we can multiply or square a binomial expression. So I write down here at the bottom x plus 1 all squared. Well, that's just the same as saying x plus 1 times x plus 1. We've developed a lot of different tricks uh, throughout the years for how to uh, simplify and expand this. We've used FOIL, uh, we've used something called double distribution, you know, whichever way you want to you want to use it. Well, let's now think about if I wanted to take a binomial expression but raise it to an, uh, an exponent that is not 2. So for my example here, I said, what if I wanted to raise x plus 1 to the exponent 7? Well, I could take x plus 1 and multiply it by x plus 1, and then multiply it by x plus 1, and then multiply that by x plus 1, you know, seven different times. It would be very tiresome, uh, it would take a lot of work, and, uh, you know, what's even the point? Well, there's this man uh, back in the 1600s, his name is Blaise Pascal, and he came up with something that we now call Pascal's Triangle. And we use it to aid us in expanding out binomial expressions. So this is what Pascal's triangle looks like. Essentially, the beginning and end of each row in this triangle is a 1. And then we use sort of a recursion formula to get the next numbers in the rows. So, for example, the very top row is 1 and then the second row is 1 followed by a 1. To get the numbers in the third row, remember the rule that we always start and end the row with 1. But we got the 2 in the middle because 2 is equal to the two numbers above it added together. So 1 plus 1 gives us the 2. The next row starts with a 1 and ends with a 1, but we get the numbers in between by taking the two numbers above each of these. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3. So this row is 1, 3, 3, 1. And then so on and so forth. 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4. And then the next row and the next row. And this actually continues on forever. We can keep adding rows as much as we need to. But yeah, Blaise Pascal was the mathematician that created this triangle. And in this course, we use it for expanding binomial expressions. In other courses, such as data, man data management, you'll see that this triangle is used uh, way more often. And there are lots of different patterns, lots of different uh, reasons and mathematical properties that this triangle has uh, that will aid us in our mathematics. It's also useful or sort of interesting to know that Blaise Pascal was uh, also the mathematician that helped develop the study of probability. He and Fermat, you may have heard of his name before in, in uh, math class, uh, our math contests are named after Pascal and Fermat and some other ones. Um, both he and Fermat uh, pretty much developed the study of probability. And you'll see more of that in the data management class. So let's explore how we can use Pascal's triangle to expand a binomial expression. So let's go back to the a plus or the x plus 1 all squared, but instead I'm going to call it a plus b all squared, where a and b can just represent any different terms that we want. Well, we know that a plus b all squared is just equal to a plus b times a plus b. And if I FOIL this out, I end up with a times a, which is a squared, a times b, which is a b, b times a, which is just another a b, and then finally b times b, which is b squared. Simple enough. When I get my final answer here, I just collect the like terms and I end up with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. 
Okay, so, you know, why was that useful? Well, let's compare the coefficients of this to Pascal's triangle. So look at the different coefficients of these terms. I've got uh, no coefficient, but in fact it's a 1 in front of the a squared term, a 2 in front of the ab term, and another 1 in front of the b squared term. And if you look at Pascal's triangle, there's a section or a row that contains the numbers 1, 2, and then 1. It happens to be the third row in the triangle. Hmm. Observe some other things in our final result. Firstly, as we move through each term in our final answer from left to right, notice how the exponent on the a terms decrease from 2 all the way down to 0. Our first term is a squared, our second term just has 1a, and our third term doesn't even have an a at all. It's the same as saying a to the exponent 0. The exponent of the b term does the exact opposite. It starts at 0, but then goes all the way up to 2. We already talked about how the coefficients of each term are the numbers which appear in the Pascal's triangle beginning with the row 1, 2. And finally, the term 2ab arises from the contributions of 1ab and 1ba. It's sort of the same as how we got 2 from Pascal's triangle. It's the addition of the 1 plus the 1 from the row above it. So if I know in advance that I could use Pascal's triangle to not only tell me the coefficients of my final expanded answer, but it will also help me figure out the exponents on the a and the b terms. The question though is which row of Pascal's triangle do I use? Well, if I consider the fact that the very, very top number 1 is row 1, 1, 1 would be row 2, and 1, 2, 1 would be row 3, we always want to use the row that is one more than the exponent that our, binom by our binomial expression is taken to. So if we want to expand a plus b cubed, we would then select the coefficients from the row of the triangle that begins with 1, 3, or essentially the fourth row. So those coefficients are 1, 3, 3, 1. We can immediately write down what the expansion would look like. It would be 1a cubed, remember the a term goes from 3 all the way down to 0, whereas the b term's exponent goes from 0 all the way to 3. So it would be 1a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus 1b cubed. Now normally we don't write the 1's as coefficients, so it just simplifies to what I have written down here below. And it's now that easy. We can expand a binomial expression using Pascal's triangle's numbers in the row as the coefficients. Just to hammer down this point, suppose we wanted to find a plus b to the exponent 4. Again, we find the row in Pascal's triangle that begins with 1, 4, which is the fifth row. And we can write down the coefficients as 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. The a variable goes from the exponent 4 all the way to 0, and the b variable goes from the exponent 0 all the way to the exponent 4. Well now let's look at an example where we don't use a and b, but two different terms. So I'm going to, instead of writing a plus b, I'm going to use 2x plus y. But this 2x just replaces where the a was, and this y just replaces the b. Because this is to the exponent 3, we're going to use the coefficients from Pascal's triangle of the row that begins with 1, 3, 1, 3, 3, 1, which happens to be the fourth row. Remember the other rule, that as we move through the expansion from left to right, we will decrease the exponent of 2x from 3 all the way down to 0, but increase the exponent on y from 0 all the way to 3. So it will end up looking like this. 2x plus y, all cubed, equals, I write the coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1, in front of the four different terms. Then I write the a term, which is 2x, to the exponent 3, and the next term I write it to the exponent 2, and the next term I write it to the exponent 1, and in the last term I don't include it. The b term, which in this case is the y, isn't included in the first term, I put it to the exponent 1 in the second term, then to the exponent 2, and then finally to the exponent 3. 
we will need to do a little bit of simplifying here. So I'll have to figure out what 2x to the exponent 3 is. Remember, that's just equal to 2 cubed and then times x cubed, while 2 cubed is 8. For this one over here, I'm going to have to take 2x all squared and 2 times uh, sorry, 2 squared is 4, x squared is x squared, and then that 4 will need to multiply to the 3, which is the coefficient on the outside. That little bit of mathematics is something that you're going to need to do for each of these questions. But the first uh, expansion that you write out just follows the pattern that we've used throughout. Our final answer here, when everything is simplified out, is 8x cubed plus 12x squared y plus 6xy squared plus y cubed. So now it's your turn. I want you to try example A. Expand 3a minus 2b to the exponent 5. Remember, just assume that this 3a replaces the original a that we had before, and this negative 2b replaces the b that we had before. I'm going to caution you and make sure you don't forget that this is negative 2b, not positive 2b. So anywhere you see the b term from before, replace it with negative 2b. We're going to the exponent 5, so use the uh, row in Pascal's triangle that begins with 1, 5. After you finish that, I also want you to try from a selection of any of these six examples. Pick two or three of them and see if you can expand them out. If you're struggling with this, maybe pick a couple of the first, uh, or sorry, a couple of the easier ones. Uh, but if you think you're a real expert on this, maybe try some of the more uh, tougher ones, like question four or even question seven. I'll go over the answer to this question in class. So good luck with this question, and we will see you later.